Okay. Well, hello everyone for more multi arch. Um, I'll try and be more exciting this time around. Um, so, fortunately for me, Philip has just covered all the really boring technical stuff, so we don't need to do that again. Um, I will try and talk about some slightly more, less hardcore uh, aspects of the problem. So, there's, there's a couple of things here. There's basically where we're at, what's going on. Philip's covered some of that. I've got a few more things to say, but also particularly if people have problems with their packages and would like to ask questions, this is an opportunity to do that. Uh, unfortunately, several of the clever people who know the answers have left, so <laughs> please don't ask questions that are too difficult. Uh, it's quite late in the day and it's kind of stuffy. Um, so, uh, first thing, simple point, uh, as has been explained, the interpreter runtime stuff is a little bit tricky. Um, it's not actually broken, it's uh, just that some combinations of things you can't install. Um, well, this is not broken for most purposes. Uh, so, uh, someone said how link, uh, I don't know, uh, app get, uh, no. Okay. Somebody type a page in the wiki in. Um, so the, there is a multi arch Python in Ubuntu. It's been there for a while. Uh, it basically works. Uh, I think, Docker, you said you hadn't uploaded that to Debian or... Microphones, microphones. Um, well, um, I did um, do the multi arching of Python because we uh, did need Python to, to build or to cross build our base system. Um, when cross building, you have two, two possibilities to, um, well, to, to build the base system. Uh, the first one is to, to use a staged build, just avoiding to build. Um, the Python stuff and modules and packages. And the second uh, approach is to, to well make Python ready to to build ex to cross build extensions, not just the Python interpreter itself, but um, to cross build as extensions. And that was the thing which was chosen. Um, however, um, the DBKG maintainer did complain about the approach, and um, so. Um, what you have in Debian is exactly the same as in Ubuntu, but with the multi-arch uh, attributes removed from, from the binary packages. Okay. I think the, the other problem is that at least some of the uh, Python multi-archification in Ubuntu relies on build depends on colon any, which don't work yet in Debian. Uh, and uh, I'm still hoping to try to work, try to, try to carve out some time to work with uh, build daemon containers in Debian to finish that off at uh, DevConf. Uh, if I don't manage that, then hopefully it'll be relatively shortly afterwards. Right. When you say don't work, you mean it's in dpackage, but the wanna build thing goes wrong. Uh, yeah. Wanna build will just reject any such thing and declare it uninstallable. Um, and I can't remember whether quite all of the s build bits have landed, but uh, it's right. all very, very, very close. It's just yeah. not quite there. Okay, cool. Um, so Pearl, we, uh, Nico Tini did uh, some fine work to basically work out how to rearrange the Pearl packages to have multi-arch support. Um, that's not actually uploaded anywhere yet, um, apart from my bootstrap archive. Um, and I guess it's not even uploaded in Ubuntu either, is it? In Ubuntu, we did uh, revert it after we uh, were able to build Perl natively. Okay. And I'm not sure if Perl already has support to build uh, extensions for cross-build cross build extensions. Cross build extensions. Yes. I managed to cross-build some extensions. Wow. The, the, okay, the make maker thing that does that is very stupid. Uh, so it needs quite a good kicking, but I did get it to build a couple of examples. Uh, specifically, MakeMaker, or um, did you hap did you manage to try any that use the new, rather newer and rather less crap uh, module build? Uh, no, so I haven't tried that. Nice. Um, uh, I think that would be worth a shot because yes. uh, if yes, anything, make -make a lot of stuff still uses MakeMaker, but yeah. there'd be things moving over to module build. Right. Okay. And that explicitly has cross support, or at least I have no idea. Right. Um, I was asking. So yeah, MakeMaker just does, doesn't really understand the concept, so it's a bit of a manual. But it wasn't for simple modules. I think it's okay, but uh, it probably breaks anything more complicated. So the Perl stuff. So it was it was doing the Perl uh, 
multi-arching that we realize there's this transitive dependency thing that we weren't quite sure what to do about. So we all kind of went, uh. Um, so I used that Perl for the ARM64 bootstrap. Uh, it turned out that you could cross-build Perl or you could multi-arch Perl, but I couldn't get a multi-arch Perl to cross-build. Well, it, it did, but lots of things were in the wrong places. Um, it's kind of hacky, but you know, uh, as Docker says, you could use that to get started, and then you could just build one natively again, at which point it comes out better. TCL we've done. Um, I started. Is that all right? Just uh, having the headers and the libraries in the multi arch locations, not being able to build tickle extensions or cross build tickle extensions. Okay. Uh, so I'd we have the because of the config script thing. Yes. But we have we have links to the config script. We, there's, a, there's a little um, shim. Where's Dimitri gone? Is this all what what's needed? Yeah, I think so. Apparently. Okay. So uh, the, the so the set of programs uh, which are mostly old, which predate package config, don't. So package config just works with multi arch. You know, you, you tell it ask it where stuff's installed. It tells you where stuff's installed. Old-fashioned things tend to have a shell script you run in user lib tcl config dot sh, right? Which, all which, yeah, exactly. Which all just give you the path of the thing I was built with, not like the path of things I need to build for now, which is the question you were trying to ask it. Um, and so they're all crap and broken. Um, and, and so some modification apparently works okay for most TCL stuff by just. Uh, Installing the multiple versions in the multi in the multi arch locations, and then everything calls what it believes to be the canonical script, which looks up what architect you ask you ask for and gives you the answers from the appropriate thing. But mostly, we should probably just move all these things to use package config. That's the right way to do it. But some hackery with sh shell wrappers seems to get us a reasonable way with other things that have crappy scripts. So, so far as I know, that works. For uh, including for building TCL things which build depend on TCL, but I have no idea what the status is for Java, Mono, and Ruby. Does anyone in this room know? Oh, of course, the Ruby man. Okay, so Ruby two comes with uh, multi arch support upstream. Okay, uh, oh, yes, she's true, yeah, that should work. I'm I'm managing the final bits to make sure that uh, <laughs> you can co-install two different architectures of the Ruby interpreter itself. Okay. Actually, the the, the binary is already co-installable. The lib package is that It's not because some stupid thing, but should be easy to fix. And then when that's done, uh, maybe that can be backported for Ruby 1.9 Okay. So that sounds like progress. Um, does Java has J and I, doesn't it? So I guess those things would need to be, are you a saying? Right. Uh, I think you were saying that the Open JDK does look in multi arch locations for JNI things, but upstream Oracle doesn't, so that won't work. Um, so, yeah, so we're making progress. Uh, we have this general problem of transitive dependencies to do something about to make everything work properly, uh, but it's coming along. Perl's a bit of a blocker because that's part of the base system. We really do need that fixed. Um, so, at the moment, there isn't even anywhere to file bugs about it. There's basically a very long thread on the Perl list about what fun this has been. Um, so at the moment, the version experimental is part of the 5.18 transition. That should happen soon. I'm not quite sure when soon is. Is Nico here, or is he? Uh, yeah, the 5.18 transition should be in a week or two or something like oh, right. that. Oh, right, really so soon. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll upload our... Um, slightly broken multi-arch Perl for people to experiment with and file bugs about and see. One thing I'll say is that uh, for once we won't be able to be ahead in Ubuntu. Uh, the uh, uh, 5.18 transition is, I think, probably going to be a bit late for our, uh, for our next release, so we'll have to hold it off for Go a while. Go ahead, Ubuntu. Whoa, how cool are we? So. Um, so, so, yeah, so one thing's interesting about Perl is that we've had to split it into two pieces. So Perl was carefully one thing, so that when you upgraded it whilst doing stuff, installing core stuff, you couldn't end up with a broken one. But now we've got two parts. So if we managed to upgrade one and not the other, other things could go wrong during pre-installed scripts that use Perl and other. Uh, so there's potential for breakage. I don't think we'll get to find out until we try it, really. 
Okay. Let's discuss that and reason about it before we upload it. I'd rather not well, have it. We'll put it in experimental, right? So that we can try Exper stuff. No. no. Experimental is not useful for getting user testing. Okay. If this is if you're trying to find bugs in your stuff, experimental effectively you only get that's only useful for having a coordinated group of people to, to test things. If what you need is you need eyeballs on a problem, don't don't upload it experimental and ask for eyeballs. You need to talk to people and, and the upload to experimental is irrelevant. But I'm saying it, it shouldn't go to unstable at all until we've actually thought through and reasoned about the maintainer scripts and not just counted on people to find bugs in them for us. Okay. Um, yeah, it's definitely not going to unstable before those are looked at properly. So I just thought it's easier to test if it's in experimental because you can just app get it and then you can try stuff. Well, not if the app get failed. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> but then you found there was a problem. <laughs> well, sure, <laughs> but you know you should think about it first and make sure that app well, get works before you upload we've, it. We've thought anywhere. about it a reasonable amount and believe it will work. Um, I know, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be put it somewhere else if, it's if it's too broken for experimental. And I'm I said certainly I'm going to test it <laughs> that much before uploading it. Yeah. Sure. And my point is just that, um, I, not that it's too broken for experimental, but that uploading it to experimental is not a good safety net to rely on, mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, and that if you if you haven't thought about it enough that you're happy uploading it to Unstable, we should think about it some more. Yeah. Okay. Um, please do that, fill people. Uh, <laughs> and people like Steve, who knows what he's talking about. Um, so there's the whole uh, chain of um, arch independent all dependent things, um, which we've covered. So I wrote all that up. There's a nice wiki page now, which I don't think Philip mentioned, which basically covers the discussion so far. And uh, Colin has a nice shiny piece of paper which was produced during lunchtime. We, we'll get to argue about it a bit more. But yeah, it's pretty esoteric stuff. So unless you've been taking interest in this, you probably just want to wait for someone to provide you with an answer. Um, one thing we have discovered is uh, Helmut wrote a nice handy little script to work out just how many instances are there of something which is arch any, depending on something which is arch all, depending on something which is arch any, and it isn't just a false positive. Uh, so there were 640 packages in Unstable with that property. Uh, quite. We're down to 500, excluding Molecule. Okay, because that was about 100. And <laughs> sorry, they're down to 540 packages um, with uh, some false positives excluded. So a reasonable number, uh, and uh, from the languages we expect, including as, as well and Node. Um, uh, as Colin says, it's possible that, in fact, in Perl, this isn't really a problem. But um, that will be quite a lot of packages to just make Arch any uh, and have um, 13 copies of. Um. Yeah, I think the uh, from from the discussion with Helmut at lunchtime, uh, I think my my feeling is that Helmut's uh, proposal to um, basically propagate up the, the running the architecture running arches proposal. is basically right. Uh, the refinement that this stuff I was thinking about would introduce is uh, uh, we think probably doing something with multi-arch loud and having additional things that look a bit like how you're handling arch all, addi additional sort of worlds where you, where uh, you have to have the same set of architectures, but you can have multiple um, domains within it. So this is for the Perl and Python scripts right. in the same package problem. Um, but uh, I don't think any of this should be a blocker to going ahead with uh, uh, with Helmut's idea, and it seems basically right to me. So okay. So, um, not that this helps magic up somebody to do the work. But yeah, yeah. That, so the main problem with that actually is somebody doing some depackage work. Um, we're always short of enthusiastic people to go and hack on depackage and argue with Guillaume, uh, and he's not here for us to argue with him in person, which is a pity. Um, we'll see how that goes. Sorry? No. Um, sorry. Um, so, uh, 
Other aspects, the multi-arch cross spec has existed for a long time and the docks are all full of, uh, this isn't specified and don't do that and don't move your headers and this only covers library transitions. Uh, that was true. It's really quite out of date now, actually. We've been using the multi-arch cross spec for ages in Ubuntu. Seems to work, doesn't seem to have caused any real problems. So uh, basically, unless anyone has any massive objections, I think we should just declare that part of the spec. Um, Yeah, no, no fundamental objections. It seems uh, it seems very solid. It's all of the all of the dependency level stuff is working just fine. Mm. Uh, the the one thing I'd say is that it's very easy for people to miss the case where their headers are not in fact as multi arch as they look, uh, particularly with um, uh, if you're let's say if you're uh, Headers happen to depend on the endianness of your build machine, but you only test on AMD64 and i386, you won't notice that it is really multi-arch. Or if they depend on it being Linux, yes. uh, and then suddenly FreeBSD differs, say. Um, so I think it would be I think it would be helpful for uh, to have some kind of checker script that can look at a set of basically look at an archive and check whether the allegedly multi-arch SIM things in it are in fact so multi-arch SIM. Someone asked that very question outside, saying, how do I check whether my package is actually, which ones really differ between architectures? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's and desperately hard, but I'm not sure anybody's written such a thing. Jacob Wilkes scripts. Sorry. Yeah. Jacob has these kind of scripts, but I don't know where you can find yeah, them. Yeah, I'm not sure how a maintainer can use those, so I think we need to find that out and write it down for people. As maintainer of DDoP Debian Net, uh, I uh, came to this idea during the step conf and I will investigate what I can just pull in two arc architectures into DDoP and then do comparisons that way. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Uh, then, then I've, got the, I've got the issue of uh, what's, what is Arch in depth? Uh, yes, we'll come to that in a minute. That's another item further down the list is what is the definition of matching? But, um, let's see would be terribly useful if the, perhaps the package tracking system told me that had had a just scanned over development packages and said, oh, these are all identical. I think this should be marked multi-arch multi same. Mm. Right. Well, I mean, you can't, you, can't, you can't just do it straight away because you ideally want all of your uh, dependencies to be multi-arched first because you cannot multi-arch this library dev and then you can't co-install it because its dependencies are not co-installable. That's not true. Yeah, yeah it just yeah. doesn't do anything. Yeah, you don't no reason not. Th things don't have to, Colin right. said, things don't okay. have to be multi-arched in tree order. You don't have to start from the bottom. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, right, okay, that's not an issue then. But the other bit that I did hit was that uh, you have to deal with the fallout where things and configure scripts don't look at the multi-arch locations. Yeah. And so if you move stuff to multi-arch locations, you should ideally look at your reverse build dependencies and make sure they don't start looking into embedded copies of libraries because there wasn't one found in mm. the system location. So yeah, that's, that's quite important advice. Yeah. If, if, if things build depend on your stuff, then you need to check that that stuff still builds, uh, preferably correctly. Uh, because we know that there are problems, especially if you've got one of these stupid config script things, um, which is very likely to give the wrong answers uh, without some work. What else do we have? So there's this thing about um, arch all build dependencies being assumed to be MA foreign. So again, this was done in Ubuntu a while ago because it turns out that whilst you can't do this for dependencies, you can do this for build dependencies and just say, if it's arch all, um, must, I can assume it's foreign, um, which means that every maintainer doesn't have to put a one line, this package is MA foreign, i.e. I can just use it as a tool and it should work. Um, now, uh, the fix we're about to do for the transitive problem makes this go away, so we don't need to. But in the meantime, given that there might be a fair amount of mead time, maybe we should, again, this is stalled on, are the dpackage maintainers going to uh, complain? Steve gotten around to actually presenting it to the dpackage maintainers. Yeah. Well, um, I asked on the list actually a while back this very question. Sorry, who? I did. Because uh, you hadn't. Oh. Uh, and I don't think I got an answer. Okay. Um, um, so well, I can re-ask. Yeah. Maybe. 
Um, but just to, to give the two-line summary of why this is okay for uh, build dependencies and not for um, dependencies, it's because the only place this ever comes up in build dependencies is when you are trying to cross-compile, and that was never possible previously in, a pack in the packaging system anyway. Therefore, um, we're not breaking anything that previously worked by assuming all architecture, all dependencies are actually multi-arch foreign, and we can just get on with it, and, and if it doesn't work, then we do something different. But it, in fact, it's a, it's a good enabler. Um, because we don't have to worry about breaking compatibility by thinking an architecture all package satisfies a dependency that it really doesn't. So yes, because the, the docs at the moment, I think, tell developers not to multi-arch their dev packages, which is actually a bit unhelpful, and we should fix that. Um, the docs are wikis, right? Yeah, yeah I know, I know. <laughs> well, I, that's why I asked this question today. So, is anyone going to complain if we do, are we should, do you think we should combine the two specs into a spec or should we just leave it? Um, microphone back again. Oh, so, oh. Sorry, with regards to combining the specs, um, the existing spec that you're referring to is is it's it, it was written as the implementation spec, which is this is how we put together the package managers to do what we want to do. Mm. And multi-arch cross, I believe, primarily documents this is how you want to put together your packages. And I think we should have documentation of this is how you should put together your packages. But I don't think merging the specs, the two as they exist, is a sensible thing to do. OK. Well, I was, I was thinking of trying to, as you say, have one thing which is a, a, a specification as opposed to a discussion and <coughs> implementation and explanation. There are different things. So my only <laughs> objection to Sorry. having dev packages uh, being multi arch foreign is that we'll have to remove those headers again after the fact. So we need to put careful thought into that uh, to come up with a Lintian tag uh, that enables us to remove them later on. What do you mean remove we them? No, remove. Still uh, but but uh, multi arch foreign headers don't make any sense on dev packages. They pr don't provide the no, no, no. boundary. Okay. Uh, I, I think that. Uh, this is talking about architecture all, which is not yeah. the which is not for dev packages. Definitely. Oh, there there might be a small handful. Like okay. Right. We mark them as our he okay. said something about templates. So regarding the specs, it's mostly indeed true that multi arch cross is more of a how to. However, it also has some. Uh, it's got some spurious stuff about tool chains, which I think I just taken out because that was a kind of irrelevant. Really, there, there's that, but it also has a, an extension to multi arch spec in terms of the behaviour of uh, build depends on colon any, and I think that should be folded back in because it's pretty confusing to have them separate. So, uh, so yes. Um, yeah, maybe it would be a good idea to uh, comb through the, the multi-arch cross uh, file again and then really um, uh, so, um, take, out, uh, take out the stuff that is uh, usable as a spec uh, as it is and where we have actual implementation experience. Put that in a separate document. Mm. Uh, I don't yeah. know if it should be a DEP it's or kind of whatever. It's, it, it was started as a discussion document, and it's acquired bits of sort of actual spec as things yeah. have firmed up. But yeah, it's not really and a very uh, good document as it stands. Of course, we need also a place where the discussion moving forward still can mm. happen. So. OK, I guess I should have a look at those uh, doing that. Um, oh, we could have, a, we could have an action. I never get actions out of my boffs. Uh, action wiki will fix for wiki. Turns out I can't talk and write. Okay. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Turns out, yes. Turns out DevConf is full of pedants. Um, <laughs> so uh, we should have some multi-arch related goals. We had the goal last time was make the libraries. Uh, co-installable uh, and get rid of i32 libs. Uh, yeah, dash dev co-installable and all dash dev packages. Yes, all. Well, that might be. It's a, bit a good goal. Okay, our goal is supposed to be. I like achievable goals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, I would like to see um, some means um, for for some QA um, criterion. Um, for for um, cost buildable packages, um, currently it's very difficult to look at the cost uh, at the results of, of a cost build daemon and decide uh, is it intended to fail? Is it 
intended to, to build. And um, so um, I would like to, to have us to, to add some, some attributes maybe to the control file. Uh, this is the package which is supposed to cross build. Um, on and maybe something like this is a package which the maintainer has checked that it does cross build right. correctly. Is that, is that really something that should go in the control file? I, um, I think you're right that we should have QA yeah. and include the concept of is expected to work, is not expected to work, has never been tested. Well, but maybe we can add more jobs to Jenkins to see that they just fetch the package and cross build it. And if it succeeds, it should succeed and not regress. Yeah, if it ever built once before, then it should carry and on And just working. throw away the results. I mean, we don't care about the cross-built results. Where's the mic gone? No, um, we proposed a field about uh, package being cross-buildable, like maintainer saying it should cross-build, and then it being a bug if, it, if it's not, then or like at least having a flag, like you said. In um, an email that Wook and I wrote um, to Debian Devil in the beginning of the year, and there were some reasons of some people who are don't <laughs> remember now why that's not a good idea. So if you look up that thread, you can maybe respond and say why you think it's a good idea. Um. We have the access test suite field already in the package file, and currently it's only used for auto package test. But we can add comma cross buildable, which is a test. Yeah, might work. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. Somebody needs to think about that, really. Uh, yes, it would definitely be useful if maintainers had better. Th my idea was that we'd run a cross build daemon and put the output of that into the package tracking system to say your package does or doesn't cross build. And basically, if it had never done it before, we w it wouldn't be a failure um, for it to not work now. But if it ever had worked, then we'd moan that it used to work and now it's broken. <laughs> Philip wants to talk? No? Speak? no? Just ah, okay. So, yep, yeah, okay, that would be good. Um, any more suggested goals, Steve? Well, actually, I was going to respond to the oh, sorry. this question of, of tracking what builds and what doesn't. I mean, I think the goal is everything should be buildable, and we get as far as we, we can with that as long as people are caring about cross-building. So, like, when somebody's in actively doing a bootstrap, they worry about these things, mm. and it's always going to regress in the in between and I don't think it's it's um, you know reasonable or realistic to require Debian maintainers to for instance regard those as release critical bugs no. because they're not release critical for Debian mm -hmm. but I think I think all of this worrying about documenting what does or doesn't cross build is actually it, to a certain degree it's wasted effort when you don't actually need to get it cross built right now and right then and there and when you do the fact that it was a failure or not and that you knew about is not the point the point is you now have this thing that you need to get cross-building, and you do that when you need to. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I think it's actually uh, I pr the idea was that we we by running some QA that people get told about, we're quite likely to keep it in a good state because, of course, without any QA or CI, it's quite likely to get broken again. I think one one thing I would uh, one thing I would say is that it's useful to know whether a package I, I, when you're when you're in that position of uh, of trying to bootstrap something, it's useful to know whether something ever built before. Uh, because then you have some notion of whether the problem might be tractable or not. If you're just staring at a sea of 600 build failures, it's <laughs> quite hard to see what's sensible to work on first. And, and similarly, the information that the maintainer thinks this works because it's in the control file is actually quite important. You know, I think I fixed it. If it's broken, then you know, you're likely to get a better response than, no, this is, this is never going to be cross-buildable. I'm not interested. Get lost. Well, um, I don't think that's a reasonable response from a maintainer, and <laughs> that's why NMUs exist and <laughs> such and such. Uh, okay, um, although some things are a bit scary, and some you things, might some prefer not to do that. Some things are difficult to cross-compile, and, and I guess I, I take Colin's point that it's useful to have that information, but I don't think it belongs in the control file. I think it's mm. just something we should we should be running QA outside to, yeah. to document uh, this for our own purposes rather than I mean pushing it on the maintainer, because then what... what I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. There, seems, there seems to be... To be two aspects of it. There's what do we want uh, to force developers to do and what are we ready to take on as stuff that we need to do as NMUs or whatever when mm. we're trying to cross build and uh, this is very important to if we start doing partial arches which is the next stage. So if we ever end up with stuff that's in a partial arch that's only ever cross built then is it you know like me MinGW guy the only responsible person for actually doing all the patching work or can we force 
DDs to do the cross build stuff for some stuff if it's ever been done before. And so that's what's nice about having something in the control file because that means that the DD, the d well, the maintainer of the package is sort of committing in a sense to but keep the, the package cross the, the low threshold NMU wiki page, right, is DDs committing to something, and that's yeah. very simple. So it's just a list of people. So we could just do that yeah. and say, do you, w will you help? Uh, we, we do, do have you a tradition. We do already have a, tr a long tradition of of low threshold NMU's being permitted across the archive for porting work, and this is just a kind True. of porting work. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I mean the so the the acceptance of cross compiling is increasing slowly, you know, and, and we may find, of course, that once everyone's got really fast ARM machines, there'll be less of it again. Uh, we'll see how things go, um, and. It's fair to say at the moment we only really care for the a fairly base system, but it will be nice to spread that further up the. Uh, I think the uh, Ubuntu particularly would quite like to have a nice dev system for the phone dev thing. So if everything in that tree cross built nicely, that would be cool. Can we gr uh, agree on a target for for cross builds? So I think it doesn't make sense to um, well to choose uh, ten different targets for cross builds. Uh, but maybe uh, as a first goal, well, agree on one or two targets which we want to address. What, you mean arch target architectures? Yes. Uh, well, supposedly something which, uh, well, the majority of, of, of developers can actually run. So, for example, ARM HF. Um, I, th there aren't very many. I mean, if you've made it work, it should work everywhere, shouldn't it? How often is it? Yeah, but, but how, how can you test that? Yes, OK. Well, yeah, in practice, maybe we'd only test for a, a target. And that's what people will get told about. So yeah, ARM HF's a good one at the moment. I'm happy with that. Uh, but in general, if you fixed it to cross, it should just cross for everything. Modulo, I don't know, um, strange Java dependencies that are broken for some architectures or whatever. Uh, OK, so yes, just to get through things, we'll come back to release goals, possibly. But um, uh, Mingu presents an interesting case because our, our current assumption about what is a different package for multi-arch purposes, a different file, sorry, is, uh, you know, a, it's, it's libc, but just uh, the small subset of headers which are different between architectures. But as soon as you go, no, no, Mingu's an architecture as well, that has a completely different libc, it's not a POSIX libc. So in fact, the set of headers that change just got much bigger. So the question becomes, what is your definition of the same? Uh, now, it's actually fairly easy to fix in the case of Mingu. You just go, OK, well, all the C headers change between some of our architectures, so we'll put them all in the multi-arch locations, um, except for maybe the three that are actually the same between Windows and Linux. I don't know. Um, how crazy is that? How violently do we object? Because it's also the same for the Linux non-super um, embedded people, I suspect. And Android, exactly, <laughs> yes, which is another useful. So maybe we should start to actually put all the C library stuff out of user include, pretty much, and then we can have a wider range of architectures supported. Um, well, for starters, I would just uh, declare a, a mingw libc dev package uh, arch all, and that puts its stuff into a sub -tier. So I don't see a reason for for it not to uh, be parallel installable. And, and leave all the stuff. Linux stuff there and hope that nothing accidentally includes that. Yeah. Stephen can respond about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much what's happening just now. There's, al there's already a MinGW cross compiler in, in the archive with the C library. Uh, it, only, it uses the old style uh, user triplet stuff. And it only uses that, so it never picks anything up from user include. Uh, so that works fine if you're doing sort of the equivalent of bare metal builds that only target the C library on Windows. If you start to extend things, uh, so I've got there are users who'd like to have libraries, other libraries for um, uh, GTK, for, yeah, like yeah. GTK for Windows, and there are even in Debian packages that need other stuff. Like for instance, Python needs uh, Zlib. And uh, whenever we get around to packaging it, Wine Mono is going to need a whole stack of stuff. And so we either duplicate all the packaging, which is what Fedora have done, or we try to do a multi-arch stuff. And because we're saying that arch independent stuff can go into just user include, that means that the MinGW GCC 
has to look there as well to pick stuff up like, uh, well, nothing that's driven by package config, but Zlib, for instance, has its headers in user include. Um, so we this GCC MinGW needs to look in there, which means you can't have anything in there that's going to confuse other stuff. So basically, libc has to move out if we go down that route, because you then get configure scripts that look around for stuff, uh, and uh, they pick up stuff that's that's in user include that they can use to build, but they won't actually it won't match anything when they're running. I think. Uh, well, to move uh, glibc to, m to the multi alt include, yeah, you would have to do it first and, and then do a test rebuild of the whole oh archive right. and yeah. see, what see how much breakage we get. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think we we can't stop with, with glibc because there are many Linux specific headers then in, 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 uh, in USR include in, in other packages. Oh glibc so glibc will be the worst one. There yes. will be a bunch of insane configure scripts in the dawn of time that do stupid things and uh, uh, it'll be hell for a bit. Uh, it, would be, it would probably be helpful to do some kind of test rebuild against a test archive with glibc uh, and file a bunch of bugs so that we don't have everything, so that we don't have, have 2,000 packages instantly failing to build and then it becoming impossible to do anything for a while. Um, it might be nice to stay to that a little bit. I mean, the case for moving libc headers is, of course, good, but main w uh, po partial architecture in itself is currently still blocked by dpackage not having a main w triplet, and yes. that's the bug's been open for a long time mm -hmm. ago, and I don't know how to push a consensus on it, considering there are people who would want to do that port and cross build a lot of packages which are useful. Not true. So Although that's that's relatively trivial amount of work compared to the libc dev. Change. So my feeling sure. is that yes, there yeah, is yeah, yeah. there is general support for that. So I think we should probably Do kick we a have bit harder. The package people here. Uh, maintain, not really. as in maintain. <laughs> 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 Uh, there is an open bug to include Ming W triplet into the, into the arch table and the arch table. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we'll have to try and push that. I think um, a bit more complaining. Of the it's a trivial patch. I'm not quite sure what the objection well would be. Really. It's not that trivial, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It tends to be quite picky on the <laughs> having triplets upstream first and stuff like that, so it double checks everything, and I think there's some disagreement on the naming of the There was, ports. yeah. Is, is I'm not sure if it's solved nowadays. Is that if fixed, it even? Is, it's probably easy to add well. it. No. <laughs> well, All the people who do the port agreed on the triplet, but yeah. the rest of the world seems, seems that it's inconsistent what's been done before in Linux. Yeah, okay. there's a sort of disagreement bec between what should be done, but the thing is, it's a bit too late now because everybody does what's well, what everybody uses what's already been done, mm -hmm. and there's another a new fact that's just broken out between MinGW32, but that, all that's sort of <laughs> besides the point. <laughs> but okay, yeah. so all right, well we'll see how that goes. Um, we have only a few minutes, so I just like to we get to the actual questions from people at the bottom of this thing. Um, can someone explain what it is they were asking? Oh, there's a there's a Ben over there. Uh, hi. So, uh, for several architectures, uh, we have kernels built for 64-bit. That the user land is all 32-bit. The kernel that's used is or may be actually 64-bit. Uh, essentially, it belongs to a different architecture. Um, uh, so, if you currently, if you install the headers package for this, which is essentially the dev package for building out tree modules, that although, uh, for example, you have a dev package for a uh, AMD64 kernel image, you're actually installing this on your i386 system. Right. And th that sort of works with the assumption that you that GCC is actually, or it'll be GCC-4.7. Uh, because we do specify the compiler version, we assume that that's multi-layer. I would rather like to get rid of the uh, the pseudo native uh, the, the foreign kernel packages, mm. so you can just install the uh, you make your system multi-arch uh, and install the the kernel 
from the right, yeah, so uh, you're saying from the foreign architecture package. Now, actually, installing the kernel itself works, but the <laughs> headers package, i.e., dev package, doesn't work because that has a dependency on a particular compiler version. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. So the problem is that we're getting our libc headers, lib dev headers package. We don't care about libc. No. No, but it's the yeah. ker kernel libc dev that package, right? Which no, not that one. Not that one. <laughs> no, the Linux. Okay. No, no, no the, the Linux headers p uh, package, which is what you do for building our tree modules. Ah, that head package, right? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, do do you know how to fix this? Well, what I've just uh, been trying doing, and what seems to maybe work, uh, uh, but is kind of disgusting, is is to change the dependency on the compiler to say. For example, depends on GCC 4.7 kernel i386 or GCC 4.7 kernel AMD64. This assumes, of course, that the compiler is not actually multi arch, it's multi lib. Uh, yes. But it does sort of work in the multi arch uh, installation. Mm -hmm. can, that does can the parent just arch on that? Need a microphone? Seems to work. Space <laughs> one. I don't know what, for example, Dank or um, Brittany might think of that. I thought that was, well, Brittany. I'm pretty sure it doesn't handle it at the moment. I thought that was disallowed for the spec at the moment, but maybe Steve can... Okay, so uh, we'll have to go and think about that. Okay. We, have, we have two minutes for one more question, so I'd just like to bring that up. Is this you asking about... So help, no, help, never mind that. Yeah. We'll come back I to that. I have a follow-up question <laughs> on that. Ben, can you comment on whether having a multi arch foreign interface to the GNU-C compiler would uh, address that need? It would mean that the package has a the target architecture in the name uh, to depend on. So you might get a cross compiler, but you m may get uh, the native compiler. Okay, so you would say depends on GCC-4.7-whatever-AMD64? Dash dash yes. Would that address your need? Yes, I think it would. Okay. Right. Uh, so that might uh, happen after we have cross compilers in the archive. So, yes. Okay. So, Antonio. So is this uh, about whether we want, we need, or is it useful to have triplet dash interpreter in path? Like uh, most of the interpreter languages, you run the interpreter against a configure script with m metadata to generate a make file and stuff. So is that the way to go for enabling cross building of C extension? So at the moment, we put triplet on the front if the uh, output is, uh, if it operates on uh, foreign architecture stuff. Is that the right definition? Uh, if, the target, if the target is yes. uh, the far, that architecture. So you're, you're thinking about having triplet Ruby. Um, Why would you want to have that? I, I don't know. Triplet Ruby sounds wrong to <laughs> me because yeah. it's, not a, it's not really a cross compiler, I think. But I'm not sure I quite understand what you're achieving. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, That's <laughs> why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, there's there's one question I'd like to squeeze in. Give, which that, give that to Docker. He wants to come back. I think I think the answer is no. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, the thing I I did with with Python is um, you need uh, the the Python interpreter for the built machine uh, to build uh, extensions for the host. And uh, what I'm doing is, uh, well, using this interpreter and, and uh, uh, but prepending the, the uh, module paths for the um, host spef specific modules. So um, the, the interpreter for the build thinks it's uh, the interpreter for the host and does the right thing. So that's ugly, but it does work. I guess you, you, you compare notes. If one last thing in the five seconds we have remaining. Uh, should we enable uh, i386 on Jesse AMD64 uh, installations yes. by default? Mm -hmm. i386 uh, is a foreign architecture. <laughs> well, so they tested it in Ubuntu and not too many things went wrong. Um, but our time is over. Yeah, okay. Um, well, um, well, hands up. Should we enable i386 by default on AMD64? Uh, any no's? Right, well, there you are. Sounds like a yes. We decided something. Genius. Thank you very much for sitting here, sweating, and listening to all this tedium. Uh, I suggest we all go and do something else for a bit. <laughs>